I greet the beloved church and all of those who visit us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to ask those who can to open their Bibles. And we are going to read the Word of the Lord, which is located in the Gospel of Jesus Christ, according to Luke. We're going to read chapter 19, verse 41. Luke 19, verse 41. Amen. The word of the Lord says the following. Now, as he drew near, he saw the city and wept, wept over it. Now the group, the praise group is going to sing a song and the church may be seated. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. My beloved, this text it speaks of the triumphant entrance of the Lord Jesus to, into Jerusalem. The prophets had already proclaimed the coming of the Lord Jesus. Zechariah speaks specifically about about this specific event in which Jesus riding on a little donkey he would arrive in Jerusalem um, they were thinking that somebody Israel was expecting somebody that was going to be strong some somebody powerful like David somebody that would be able to deliver them, free them up from the Roman Empire, or somebody that would come with an army. But here it shows that Jesus, Jesus' ministry came to proclaim the kingdom of God, from which he came and fulfilled everything that was written in the Word. And the word tells us that Jesus, he, he comes to his disciples and says the following, Look, 
go and take up a donkey in the book of Mark Jesus speaks clearly how his, this little donkey was because Mark narrates the same story with extra details and he says the following go there you find a donkey and when disciples arrived they found the donkey tied up outside of the door and between two roads and Jesus said if somebody asks why you are taking this donkey from that place you tell them the following the Lord needs this donkey and so they will allow you to take the donkey and that's how it happened the disciples went there and they saw the found the donkey in that situation they untied the donkey they asked him and then why they were taking the donkey then they, they answered what Jesus told and then they put Jesus' garment on top of the donkey and Jesus sat on top of the donkey and the Bible describes that Jesus he was going towards Jerusalem and the people were singing Hosanna, glory to Jesus glory to the King it was a great celebration and the Bible says that Jesus comes before Jerusalem comes into Jerusalem as it was prophesied as uh, exactly as the prophecy had said was going to happen and then when he comes to Jerusalem he looks to Jerusalem and the text that we read he uh, wept over it and wept over it and he said on 42 he says the following saying if you had known even you especially in this your day the things that make for your peace but now they are hidden from your eyes so Jesus cries before the this hardened heart of that people that didn't accept him they didn't understand him they didn't understand the prophecy they were not paying attention to what what the prophets had proclaimed the word of the Lord had said and Jesus wept over Jerusalem and my beloved tonight the Lord wants to teach us several things there were several spiritual gifts and I'm sure that one of those spiritual gifts is going to speak directly to your heart in some way uh, for the entire church as well as for those who visit us the Lord has a special me message for each one of us he said that he was going to visit the church and he has visited the church through the praises we can feel the presence of the Lord because the Lord inhabits in the midst of the praises and this word when we bring it to our days we see that man finds himself in the same way tied up at the door so in other words outside because Mark is, uh, describes specifically that the donkey was outside of the door and in between two roads and my brethren we know we preach almost every day that the door is the Lord Jesus the man who is who is tied up who is outside of the door and in between two roads that person's situation is not comfortable and today man has this profile many times man is tied up he's tied up to his incredulity is tied up many times to addictions he many times is tied up to his way of life that does not please the Lord he is tied up to his pride that many times 
we don't believe that Jesus is this, the, the Son of God that died on the cross of Calvary to save humanity outside of the door. He hasn't had an experience with the Savior because he's tied up. And when he goes through this door, when he answers the call, two roads. You can choose between these two roads. Which way have we chosen to walk on those days today? What is the path that we have walked on? There are two paths. One road that leads man to eternal life and another road that leads man to eternal damnation. There is, no, there is no third path. There is no other resource. There are only two roads. The road that will lead to life if you accept Jesus as uh, your only sufficient Savior and the road that leads to death if you reject Him as your only sufficient Savior. But there, there are good news. Not all of them are in this situation. Not all of them are outside of, of this road, outside of the door, walking on the path that, on the, that goes to the left side. There, there's a people that heard the voice of the Lord. There's a people that one day was touched and they heard the voice of the Lord. They were untied. They are no longer outside of the door. They accepted Jesus as their Savior and they went through the door. They walked through the door and walked on the path that leads to eternity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And from this day forward, you know what happened? Jesus began to guide them. Jesus began to guide them towards Jerusalem. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because we do not walk according to our own flesh, according to our own human reason. Jesus one day called us and we heard and he assembled his Holy Spirit upon us and he guided us to Jerusalem. So in what words? He has guided us to Jerusalem because we have not arrived there yet, but we can feel the taste of what it is to how how good it is to serve the Lord. It's so good to serve the Lord today. Imagine how it is how it's going to be in heaven to follow the Lord. There, there there's not going to be any crying or pain. But the word of the Lord says also that Jesus rode on the don little donkey and on the way to Jerusalem many there would throw their robes and they would throw branches. It was all part of the celebration and that's all right. But I keep thinking on one thing. Isn't it, isn't it possible that it would have been easy, easy for Jesus, it would have been harder for Jesus to harder for Jesus to go through this path with so many robes thrown on the way and branches and maybe the donkey could trip and fall. And it speaks clearly about our own lives. And in the spiritual gift that the Lord has given tonight, it speaks clearly of many who are thinking about giving up on their spiritual walk. The Lord has shown a woman that has been speaking in her heart that the Lord does not hear her prayers. And there she's thinking about giving up on the Lord. She's asking and the Lord does not answer. There was a branches, branches, my sister. Do not give up for anything. If the Lord has not answered yet, it's because it's not time for Him to answer you. Because when He answers your prayer, He's going to give you victory for our life. Because Jesus has the best for us. It is difficult with, with the Lord. It will be even worse without the Lord. My brethren, we cannot give up on this great love. And the word for this sister is the following. 
Jesus is in command. He is, he is in control. He wants to lead you to Jerusalem. Do not give up. Let the branches fall. Let the obstacles go through your way. In the word of the Lord, there is another revelation the Lord has given you. Tell the people to march. March. March toward Jerusalem. Do not stop, my brother. Do not stop, my sister. The Lord has something special to give you every day. Because this walk is a walk. It is constant and, and a daily walk of perseverance. We cannot look toward the right or the left. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Lord has also given an, another vision. And another vision the Lord has shown that the Lord wants to speak to a man that has been used has been used in the past in the house of the Lord. And now that person is lost with his that person is without direction. And tonight the Lord wants to put him back on track. From eternity God is sending resources so that you may go back in, onto the tracks and follow the right path. There are two roads. Which one do you want to choose? The Lord, you have already been used by the Lord. And the Lord wants to use you once again. And to, he wants to call you back to His presence. He wants to do on your life. He, if you preached in the past, He wants you to preach once again. If, if you prayed in the past, He wants you to pray once again. If you had spiritual gift, why has it dried up? The Lord wants you to use in, in His presence. He wants you to use as a vessel in his, of honor in His presence. My children, do not give up. The Lord has also revealed a woman that has an illness in her heart and she doesn't know. But tonight, besides giving her the, the physical healing, but God has, wants to bring her a spiritual healing and he wants to send a message to her which is the following do not stop sowing the seeds that I told you to, to sow it was a sister that has sown or that is still sowing but is thinking about giving up has a saddened heart bitter uh, maybe a word that was not properly given I don't know but the Lord tonight wants to tell you do not give up because the Lord is in control. Luciano is not in control. Pastor Sabre is not in control. God is in control. The Holy Spirit is in control. This work is not ours. This work is the Holy Spirit of God. Do not give up, my beloved. Do not anything to enter into our heart and cause sadness and anguish. Go over the branches, our destination, Jerusalem. And that's where we're going to meet with Him, to live with Him forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Tied up outside of the door and between two roads, the Lord has revealed a man in a vision. That man was tied up. In front of a, a court, he was going to be sentenced to death. He was was uh, facing down with the hands tied. He was ex waiting for his sentence in the vision, and his attorney would come with the sentence before the king of a trial with proof that he had been purchased and that he could not be receive the sentence of death. And the attorney would show this proof and would pick him up and untie him and take him away free. My beloved, we are no longer tied up. The Lord paid the price on the cross of Calvary. His blood was shed to save us to give us eternal life. Tonight we are no longer sentenced to death or tied up. We are alive and free 
because the word says that if the Son of Man frees you up, you will be truly free. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Lord also has revealed a man tonight. And he wanted to receive uh, received a healing. He was very sick spiritually. And God wanted to heal him. And the word for the Lord tonight is very simple. We will not give up. Our, our road has not finished yet. We need to continue going towards Jerusalem because that's our destination. That's the place where we are going to rest. In this place we have many afflictions, but be a good cheer because the Lord has overcome the world on our behalf. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And now to bring this message to a close, the word says that when he was coming, when he saw the city, he wept over it. In none of it, the Lord has shown you have any worth if in your heart, if you do not repent. Uh, if you don't examine your heart and say, Lord, that, that person is me. Deliver me. Free me up. Place me on your heart on your horse Lord bring your Holy Spirit down upon me help me to walk on this path which is not easy but the reward will be very good none of it will be worth if you do not leave room for the Holy Spirit that says tonight and Jesus is going to cry once again Jesus cries for the lost soul he cries out he cries over the webs over the life that has been lost. And he webs over our, my life and your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
teu nome, Lord. Glória to God. My beloved, do not think that the Lord does not need you. He does not depend on you. He does not depend on me. But he needs us. The word says that in verse 31, Jesus says the following. And if anyone asks you, who are you losing it? It does you shall say to him because the Lord has need of it and the Lord needs you to take men out of sin because we are not the ones who take men out of sin but the Holy Spirit but we are the ones who sow the seed my sister do not stop sowing the seed because we are the ones who are going to sow the seed if I if I ask the church to to sing uh, the harvest. We're going to sing the last song of the night, asking the Lord a blessing. <laughs> so may, may hear the uh, pay attention on the lyrics of this song and so we can be vessels of the Lord. And if you came to the house tonight in this way, outside of the door, in between two roads, where introducing to you Jesus that can give you everything that you need. He can deliver your soul and can make you truly happy. It's not a, a superficial happiness, but it's a joy that is going to take you to a place that you have never been before.
Bless me in the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Bless me in the name of the Lord. You, I believe we understood the message of the Lord. So let us stand up. Let us present this spirit before the altar of the Lord. But before, I'd like to ask a sister or a brother that glorify the name of the Lord for this harvest, for the care of the Lord, for the ministration of the Lord, because He spoke to us tonight. We're going to have a glorification for salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. I want to praise because it's wonderful to be in your presence. Because it's good to serve this living God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you may every day more and more teach us to honor you, to speak of your name. Remove from us any uh, shame so that we desire your arrival, Lord. That's what we desire the most, Lord. We all want to live with you in eternal, Lord. Not only those who are here, Lord, but all of those, the family members that still don't know you, Lord. We pray uh, intercede before uh, for those who do not uh, are not in your presence, Lord, so that they may see your love, Lord. We praise you. We thank you for your unconditional love, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because we can say, where would we be if we were not your hand, Lord? We praise you, Lord, for everything that you have done in the midst of your people. Well, praise for your church that is hoping for your arrival, Lord. We want to be with you, Lord, in eternity. Blessed is your name, Lord. Hallelujah.
church celebrates the victory in the cross. Hallelujah. Holy are you, Lord. We're faithful, Lord. Hallelujah, yes, Lord. to God. Hallelujah. Holy are you, Lord. You are faithful, Lord. Lord God, we want to prevent, present this service before your altar. Lord, we have no words. We are lacking words to describe how we're feeling regarding your visitation, your care, because your words of warning because of your love, 
Lord, take us home in peace. Protect us during this week, Lord, so that the hands of the Lord may be laid upon His church, His people, upon uh, all of our uh, family members that need help. Useless, Lord, to be carriers of Your word, Lord. Use us with might, Lord. We want to present this service before our altar, Lord. We want to thank you for your visitation. We pray, thankful, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. The church may be seated. Pastor Sabado, Sabado has a message for the bread and the apostolic blessing. Amen, my brother. Peace of the Lord. Look, we sang a song a while ago, a few minutes ago, that speaks of the harvest. And there's a verse of the song says the following, if they are not warned, they may perish. We're going to have on the 24, March 24th at 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, we're going to have a seminar with children intermediary adolescents and guests there are going to be two classes and the praise group is already getting ready to sing the songs that are going to be sang in the seminar the teachers already have all the material available to them and now the part of the church is to our role is to invite to there's in the, in the Bible, Jesus uses a parable saying that the sower went out to sow. And the seed that fell on the side of the road, the seed fell between uh, thorns. The, the stone fell on, uh, the seed fell on uh, amongst stones, but also the seed fell on a fertile ground. And when the seed fell on this fertile ground, it produced um, 60 times more and 100 times more if we add it all up it's going to be 160 with 100 people in the church it's going to be 260 so we're going to have a seminar with 260 people amen, amen. do you think there is enough room for the church well no but there there are enough room outside we're going to put a couple of tents outside and there will be enough room so let's do this let's proclaim the word of the Lord the brother and sister who have a, a son, a daughter who is an adolescent, intermediary, and children, youth. Put your children to go inviting out there in your condominium or on your work environment. A few women work with uh, as hairdressers or nail polish. So while you're working, you, you do your invitation. L let the seed fall on the ground. It doesn't matter where. Don't choose a person of another. Invite everyone. Who is going to do the work is the Lord. Oh, but the country, the loss. There was in the house of Naaman, uh, a young woman. She was a slave. In, in Syria, the God was as another one. They had other customs. The laws were others. But n it did not prevent the young woman to speak in the house of Naaman in Syria with different customs, different traditions, different gods. She spoke about her God. And she would, her Lord listened to her. And God honored that young woman. And the Lord, name of the Lord was glorified. And that's what we need to do. Let us glorify the name of the Lord. Let's proclaim the, the word of the Lord. The women that have children to me that are adolescents, be patient with them. Because they're going to have to stay a little later in the service to learn the, the classes. So, that, so then the sister can stay together because she will learn also the songs. Let the whole church get involved. The church is a body. We cannot have a seminar with just half a dozen people. You who are here tonight, you're also invited. 
you participated this service, you're already invited to on the 24th to be here with us also, participating on this great celebration of this event. Brother Lee is, is going to provide on the projection at every uh, at the end of the service in three languages, Portuguese, Spanish, and, and English. Let us invite all our, our hermanos and the Americans, also the Brazilians. And my brother here can translate in two, three, and four languages. It's, it's not a problem. Amen. That's what I wanted to tell my brethren. And you who are here tonight, if you need a prayer for a life, a clarification of the word that was preached, remain where you are. The brethren are here to give you uh, complete assistance. Just need to raise your hand and you will be identified and edified. <laughs> 